Welcome to a quick introduction to construction for Salesforce.com. In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the way that we've modified Salesforce to enable organizations that sell products and services into large construction projects, a tool that helps them manage where they are in the specification process in addition to managing the complex relationships associated with getting products spec into a construction project. Let me start by just talking about the, the basic screen that you see here, and this is the Salesforce home screen. And we've got a, a few very basic dashboards that tell us about this particular um, user or this particular uh, sales territory. So I can see just by quickly looking what kind of projects I have in my pipeline, where in the specification pipeline I am, and then overall where, how my sales funnel is doing. And I'm going to spend a few more minutes talking about the specification pipeline in detail. But the big idea is that in construction projects, there are certain moments in time where your project is specified for a particular project by name or your product and maybe other products are specified either by name or something similar. So we'll talk through some of those details in a minute. But as I'm going through that, I just wanted to plant that seed with you so you have an idea of where we're going with this. So in Salesforce.com, we have a couple of big ideas. Um, the first one is the ability to manage um, accounts, contacts, and projects. So when you're looking at Salesforce.com, um, the first thing you may want to look at is just information about an account. And so accounts would be uh, customers that you deal with, they'd be general contractors, they'd be architects, anybody that has an organization that you work with, you'd, you'd be working with that information here in Salesforce. And so the ability to track that information is very useful here in Salesforce. So in this example, you can see that we have information about the account, we have information about the projects that this account is associated with. So I can immediately see if this is a GC, for example. I can see what projects the GC is affiliated with and what role that GC may be uh, playing in those particular projects. I can also see the contacts at this particular account as well as other um, projects that may be associated, associated with this account as well as activities, history, and other, um, other pieces of information. Okay, that brings us to contacts. And so contacts give me the ability to capture or track information about specific people. And so in this case, on um, this example, we've got a Jim Smith at Facebook who's a project manager. I have obviously phone number, um, email, and other uh, key details about this, uh, about this person. And like the account, I can capture um, activities and history as well as the different projects that they're associated with. And then finally, that brings me to projects. And the big idea with projects is that a project um, enables you to track information about a potential deal. And so if I open up projects here in Salesforce, I can see the different projects that I have available to me. And in addition to seeing those projects, I can also see uh, whether they're apparent projects such as this target opportunity or child opportunity. So I'm going to drill into this target example and just use this to start talking about how we manage projects and how we manage specification. In this example, we're going to look at target. And this particular deal or a project is what we call a parent project, which means that this project is actually a parent to three other projects. Now the nice thing about parent and child projects is that the total parent project is identified, number one, as a parent. Uh, but number two, we also have project potential. And the project potential is effectively the sum of the child projects. So the parent project sits on its own, but it, it, it is defined by the child projects that uh, that populate it. One of the nice things that this does for you is it allows you to have different child projects in different stages. And those stages can be both sales stages as well as specification stages. So the idea being that you could have multiple projects with multiple products. Some of those projects are specified with your product and some are not. And so that helps you understand from a selling point of view where your risk, for lack of a better word, is so that you know which, which accounts and or which projects need to really be focused on if you want to get your project spec. So in this example, I've got um, the parent project and I've got a couple of key players, which I haven't quite talked about yet, the parent or project relationships. And if I want to add an additional child project, I can simply add that project very quickly. Uh, I can call this um, tar uh, target um, additional services, let's say. And um, I'm going to um, leave that here as commercial. I'm going to maybe make that in 250,000, just, just a, some additional work. 
Um, you don't really get your product or services spec, so I'll just leave that open. And then I'll go ahead and hit save. Now a couple of things happen here. Um, the first thing is that you'll see in a minute that the, the total project value for the parent project will be updated. But in addition to that, the, the child inherits the project relationships from the parent. Now you can add to these at the child level if you have different players that are involved or different relationships. But the nice thing is it helps you maintain a real clear picture of who your players are and what role they play in the project. So now if I go back to the parent, I can see that the total project size has, has increased and now I have a, a better sense of that. Now that brings me to specification management. So I'm going to drill into one of these uh, particular uh, projects. And the idea of specification management is this idea of, of allowing you to specify which projects um, is your product or service specified versus being you know, named as an open specification or you know, something similar. And so here under specification details, I have a field called spec type. And this spec type basically has named, similar, or open. Now we can add to these if you have different ways of tracking specification. But depending on how I identify the specification for this project, it will affect my pipeline and show how much of my revenue is named in specifications and how much of it is it, how much of it is it, is it open. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make this named and then go ahead and save it. And now when I go back to my dashboards or to my other reporting, um, I can see that um, very clearly how much of my pipeline is specified. So in this case, I've got $45 million that are named in my pipeline. That means if we get those projects, we get that business. Now, I also have some that is similar, which means it could be us or our competitor that is named in the specification. And in that case, I've got roughly 20 million or 17 million of my pipeline that I could consider to be at risk. So if those, if those contracts are awarded, I need to make sure that, that I'm on those and that I'm, I'm still pursuing those. And that brings me back to some of these projects. Now, I'm going to drill down into this so I can see which projects are named and which ones are not. And so I'm going to go into, let's say, one of my named projects. And in addition to managing um, whether I'm specified or not, I can also manage the, the project relationships. So in this particular case, I want to I want to add I want to change um, this developer to an architect, and I want to identify that I have an architect I'm specified. So this is a list of the different types of roles or relationships that I manage. So I'm going to change this to architect. Um, I'm going to say that this is they're working on the core. I can also track the status of this particular uh, relationship in terms of whether or not they're going to get the project or not. So I can identify whether or not they're the apparent, the awarded, um, whether they've been blacklisted for whatever reason, whether they're simply an influencer, whether they're potential, probable, or selected. So not only can I manage my understanding of whether or not we're specified, but I can also understand my key relationships and where they sit in the overall project. So I'm going to say that the architect has been awarded this. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this to Robertson Baxter is the one that's been, been handling this. And Bill Baxter is my contact over there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in real quick. And I'll uh, just make some quick notes here. And then I'll go ahead and save it. So what that does is that gives you the ability to manage not just where you are in the specification process, but also helps you manage the key relationships that help you drive business and ultimately close business. Well, that's just a quick overview of uh, constructionforsalesforce.com. Please feel free if you have any questions to uh, use the link at the, on, on the screen here to schedule a quick call with one of our associates, and we look forward to talking with you. Thank you.